Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. This is 321 The Pod. Can you? That was a hit song, Chris, that said, let's get retarded. Wait, wait, you're not allowed to say that word anymore. I don't even think they played that version of the song. I know, right? They have to use it. But think about it. It's not like that song's like, oh, well, you know, that song was in the 1960s. It was a different time. It's like, no, that song was from like 2007 or something (laughs) like. And they were like, let's get retarded. And it's like, uh, how quickly things have changed. Yeah, they took that off. Uh, I think they took that down pretty quick after Let's Get It Started was a huge hit with the Lakers, I think. Yeah don't think that's like a uh, corporate material it's just funny though because like if you're an, if you're a true artist you're like no i wrote that song and that's how the word the words meant something but no it's a black eyed piece you're like what you're offering me money yeah change the lyrics to whatever you want i don't care right do you hear they changed their name to their band though instead of black eyed peas it's whatever color you want eyed peas oh yes well they want to you know they don't they're they're woke is, is they, they don't want to let it they won't leave anyone out you know how it is that's right. Hey, uh, what's going on? This is three, two, one, the pod. <laughs> I'm Chris Donovan. and that's Eric Lecky. Uh, we do three stories, two idiots. That's us. And then one game at the end, which I believe is about farts. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. I wish every game could be about farts. Other question. What happens if we ever have a guest on the show? Will it be three, three, one? No, because we can't do math. Okay, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, be, they'll be part of a story, so we don't mess up anything. <laughs> oh man well speaking of a story i i got you uh, how let's do story number one story one uh i you know i love my stories about florida um it's it, it's kind of my favorite thing uh comes from our old smrt days really yeah <clears throat> and my favorite thing about florida man uh stories or florida woman stories to be inclusive is they always think they're being smart they always think they're being clever and then you read the story and you're like no 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 you were being incredibly dumb well, here's this guy. His name is Charles Walker. Uh, he's from Pompano Beach, Florida. And he Pompano. decided- Pompano. Pompano, more like Pompa, yes. Um, oh, God. <laughs> uh, so he wanted to go on a family vacation. Now, the problem was it was too expensive to go to the Bahamas. Well, he decided not if he gets there on his own terms. So what did he do? Oh. He has a he had a jet ski. Now, I don't know if he rented this jet ski, which would be even funnier, or if he owned this jet ski, but he just decided I'm going to jet ski from Florida to the Bahamas. Okay. Not not being from the East Coast. How far is that? Oh, uh about 115 miles. I'm sorry. 115 miles away is is about what he was trying to uh to get to the the B- bohemi beach of bahamas is about 150 miles away so here's the thing the story leads off pretty wait, wait i have a question does the, does the thing even get that much gas mileage will it even make it no not even close not even close here's the thing you you live in southern california you see how uh, it's a pretty good distance to catalina island right yes yeah okay that is 26 miles a jet ski oh my God. a jet ski could make it to Catalina but like you're running on fumes when you get to Catalina okay. so anyways so here's the thing does he not was, sound like fun yeah he was last seen around 5 p.m. on September 23rd because uh, <laughs> <laughs> he took off he's an idiot he took <laughs> off on the jet ski and needless to say he uh never arrived in the bahamas it says his last known location was 15 nautical miles off the coast of west palm beach uh per the coast guard because the coast guard found out that some idiot was doing this and they're like well let's go collect the body so they're they're literally out there patrolling the waters um i love how they give a missing persons report on this it says uh uh charles walker is 52 years old he's five foot nine inches tall weighs 190 pounds has gray hair and green eyes according to a description provided by the family please be on the lookout um unless i'm like on a cruise ship between the bahamas and florida how would i possibly look out for this man 
I was going to say, what are they What are they asking the fish to pay attention to see some <laughs> stupid white dude go across the ocean? They're all, hey, Nemo, if uh, here's a description. <laughs> if you or your yet? father, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, okay, so uh, there's a couple things I have questions about. One, 120 miles or 100, 130 100, miles? About 115 miles. 15 miles. Um, and by the way, uh, I, 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 it's been a while since I've ridden a jet ski, but um, I don't remember jet skis having a compass in them. Oh, yeah, I mean, I so guess after you get about five miles out and you can't see land anymore. Oh, my God, you were smart. And you're like, uh, because, you know, this is Florida, man. Right. So he's just thinking like, well, it's that way. I'm just going to drive it that way. But you get five miles out. You can't tell which direction you're driving. You know, his philosophy was, you know what I could do? I can go out there. I'll have my cell phone. I'll tie it to the front of the jet ski. It'll have a GPS on it. It'll be waterproof. <laughs> It'll be perfect. Then he got five miles out without service and goes, oh, shit. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Uh, but I just like, but here's, here's the other thing. Let's just say that miracle of all miracles, this guy had so much gas with him. He was able to get all the way to the Bahamas. And he pulls up on shore of the Bahamas. Okay. What is his next plan? Well, I'm hoping he took money for a hotel. You know, well, that's my point. Like, did he? Uh, he didn't think to bring, he didn't think that a jet ski can't get you 115 miles. I don't. I, I, I really want to know. Because <laughs> here it is. Think about it. Oh, he made it and they pull him onto shore. Oh, you made it. Oh my God, what a miracle. Oh, I'm here. So... I don't know. You got like a free room or anything? Like what's uh? You know, like I mean, what was his plan? Calls was... the call, calls the jet ski place. Yeah, no. So I'm in the Bahamas. You guys are like U-Haul, right? I could leave this in a different place. <laughs> yeah, all right. Like uh, you have a pickup <laughs> policy, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. I need a tow. <laughs> yeah, and obviously not the time Imagine. to not the time to attempt this either, because if they had any any dreams of maybe finding the sky or whatever. Oh. You know, then a whole hurricane comes by the area and like washes everything. So, uh, I here's my prediction: they will never find his body. Well, I, I can. I'll think of one other prediction. Mm -hmm. They might find it in like the middle of Florida, <laughs> like actually got inland. washed up. Yeah, yeah I right. got washed up. It brought him back in. They're gonna find him like thirty miles inland because he was so far out and he was at the top of the way. I don't know how it works, but that would yeah. be hilarious. Well, that not hilarious, hilarious, but that'd be weird. Hilarious. All right. Well, that is my <laughs> first story. All right. Story two. Wow. That was great. Did you hear that? That's our production value. That story was story two. Oh, look wow. at that. Okay. I'll work on those. Uh, uh, we'll just do a quick NFL update. Uh, as you all know, it's season, week four in the NFL. Um, and there are uh, only one undefeated team in the NFC, and that's in the NFC east it's the eagles uh they are one game ahead of the cowboys and giants at two and one but the cowboys you know they lost Dak shepherd in week one um, but they're not doing so bad uh kind of like the 49ers they lost their quarterback too and yeah, garoppolo that, had to step in and kick the seahawks ass that, that, that poor uh, trey lance man he, he goes into a position where everyone wants the other quarterback and not him yeah he goes in he kind of struggles but to his you know to be fair to him the guy hasn't had a lot of playing time he just needs more time more seasoning and he then stronger just gets like, bones yeah and then he just gets <laughs> like crumpled up and he he folds like dust and i i feel really bad for that guy yeah no he he's had it hard uh over the last couple of years uh a game last night was against the uh, dolphins Bengals uh in cincinnati the Bengals won 27 to 15 uh we got a bunch of games coming up on sunday another injury last night too uh yeah uh, to eat top of gogoma <laughs> let's try let's try that one again and to a tago, to a tago i we're gonna call that a yes you know what? Uh, <laughs> was, this, this kid played at old miss and uh, i went and saw old miss play about you know four or five years ago and we were waiting in the airport to fly uh to mississippi actually we flew into um memphis and we were at the bar and this guy saw i think an old miss shirt or hat or something i had on and we started talking it was his dad his dad was going to watch him play we were like, oh, that is so dope. Now the guy plays for the freaking Miami Dolphins. That's pretty awesome. Anyway, yeah, he's uh, he's fine, though. He just was released from the hospital with a concussion, which I believe makes him ineligible to play next week. It does. So, uh, so we'll he, see how that goes. He should not be able to play. Um, I, I want to institute something in football called the wobble rule. You know, like, here's the thing. You see these guys after taking a hit and they get up, and they kind of wobble a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think there should be an independent third party 
that when they see the wobble, they institute the wobble rule, and that player is immediately inactive for the next week. You 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 can't have mm-hmm. these guys taking the kind of neurological damage that like when your body wobbles, it's because you got shook. Well, right? I mean, like, we're paying them for it, so I guess they kind of have to do it, well, right? Well, I, I guess it's your decision <laughs> and all that, but I, I would just say if they truly want to protect these players like they always claim they want to do, have a third – I call it the wobble rule, and it's just – Wobble yeah, rule. The wobble rule. Your uh, independent arbiter uh, watching it on a monitor when he sees any player kind of wobble – Oh, that was number 27 on the Eagles. And he sends them, you know, he sends it into headquarters and they're like, number 27, you're, you're out of the game. We saw you wobble. Like you're, you're obviously knocked for a loop. You know, that so does that mean you get another sticker on your helmet? If you make someone wobble, wobbly, <laughs> right? wobbly, like, wobble, it, wobble. Yeah. one person gets a sticker on their helmet showing like one color is uh, <laughs> represents concussions. I think that's what we should do. Should be, <laughs> yeah, right. Like the stickers, like if you have like just a big red X, that's how many concussions have been confirmed. Cause then you could look at the field and go, Holy crap. That guy's helmet is filled with red X's. This well, guy's going to die on the field back in the day. So it's kind of funny. They used to do that in college and high school back in the day, the more stickers you had in your helmet, the better you were the more scared people were of you. But anyway, uh, back to the NFL. We do have very early games starting on Sunday at 6.30 a.m. because they're in London. Uh, the Vikings and the how, Saints are playing over how, there. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about I don't this, mind uh, it. I think it's quite fun. Uh, I get to start drinking very early, and my wife can <laughs> accuse me not to because it's NFL. But also the Seahawks play at 10 a.m. on Sunday, and they're my team, so I will be drinking extremely early on Sunday if I even stop on Saturday but night. How, how do you feel about it from a standpoint of, you know, you're asking someone to travel. You're asking these teams to travel. I mean, you know how it is to travel yeah. a long distance, man. Like, but they set know. it up so the next week after is a buy for them. They both have a week off, two weeks off. I don't so know. So they never set I, it up so when you go to London, you come back, you're always off for that's your right but, before but your. What buy. are they really trying to accomplish? Are they trying to like turn Europe into like huge football fans? I just don't know if I see that happening. I don't. They see already really- are, and I would give it five years before they expand, like two so to you four. You think they're going to actually put teams out there? Yeah, I would say maybe two to four teams to start. Wow. There was a rumor that Jacksonville, because of just, you know, they're not really popular locally. No one really cares oh, about them. That that would be a team that they would move out there. Um, and the other reason that supports that theory is Jacksonville has already played in London like three times since yeah. they started this. So that they're trying to build it up as like, they want the people in London to start rooting. Like for Jacksonville? They see. And then that way they're like, guess what, London? Here's your new team. That's hilarious. That's actually probably what they're doing. The NFL is uh, part of the devil's work. But why wouldn't they um, go to somewhere like the Mexico first? Or <laughs> like go to Mexico? I, I don't know. Like really? it seems weird that the first place they jump to is on the other side of the world. Like why not stay in the northern, you know, North America area? Like, I mean, they could have gone to Canada, but that doesn't matter because Canada is just North of, you know, America junior. It's the America's reason we didn't hat. go to Mexico is because they hate it. They like best. They like football, which is their soccer. And I uh, think about it. We, uh, we Americans uh, like to call ourselves Americans, but we're really from England. Like the, our idiot people didn't like our other idiot people and left and came over here and made more idiot people. That's a lot of idiots. Well, but guess how many there are three, three, two, one. I was going to say on this show, there's only two. Uh, okay. Wait. Well, uh, Hold on, I'm not done yet. Well, no, I, well, no, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't moving it on. I was going to ask you, Oh, your, your Seattle Seahawks. What about them? They, they, they got that big emotional win on in week one against Denver. And that was a huge deal for you. Yes. Do you think that their entire season, cause they're, they're not projected to be a good team. Do you oh, no, think that their entire season was that moment, the very first game of the season, and then, like, they're pretty much, like, spent for the rest of the year. Like, that was what the game that they got up for because they wanted to beat Russell Wilson. And then yeah, after oh. that, they're just like, they're in the toilet. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that exactly. They went out there with a fierce uh, glint of fire in their eyes so they could kick the shit out of Russell Wilson, even though he's a great guy and made that franchise what it is today because they were nothing really until him and Hasselbeck. But beside that, the Seahawks are one and two, and I think that they'd be lucky to win one more game. Really? You think, wow, that's man, even uh, I, I hope they, they win, win more than one more game. I, you, well, no, you don't actually. You would rather them lose everything so they get the first overall pick and the, the ticket sales will go down next year. Huh. <laughs> I need that to happen because I was going to go before they were really good and it was cheap. And now I can't even afford to sit up in the bleachers. 
Yeah, it's pretty. All right. So uh, we got one of the games we have coming up this week. Uh, Monday Night Football's Rams at Seahawks or Rams at Seahawks, Rams at Niners, which will be kind of fun because that'll be a big game. Yeah. NFC East, which is my, or NFC West, which is mine. Uh, and if uh, the Ram or if the Niners beat the Rams, then it's all confusing. And if we want, it'd be like right now, if everybody won except for the Rams, it would be it would be all two and two in that league. In right. That. And then, and if you think about it, the, the, I think the Rams, they have a lot of health issues. There's a lot of people injured. There's a lot of people out. You got San Francisco having who's there, you know, what's going to happen with the quarterback is Jimmy Garoppolo any good. Like Jeez. if Seattle was ever going to have a year where every, I mean, even people in Seattle were probably picking them for like third place in the division, right? Like at best, mm-hmm. if you were ever going to sneak in as just like a, whoopsie daisy we made the playoffs <laughs> it would be this year because i have a feeling that the rams after the super bowl can do the whole super bowl letdown following year thing especially with injuries and all that i think san francisco could i don't think jimmy grapple is that good so if it was ever like one of those us against the world and we win nine games and that's enough to make the playoffs and sneak enough. in like it would be interesting if they could be like that team that's like the most underdog of all teams and they actually make the playoffs. It's hard to say that for the NFC West because usually they're like four of the top teams and only two get to make it in. Yeah. Uh, so, in, you know, unless you go over to like NFC North with the Vikings and everybody over there, they kind of don't, aren't good. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually they're kicking ass now, but they usually aren't. Uh, anyway, uh, NFL, uh, nothing else in the news besides uh, Sunday night game is Chiefs Bucks. Uh, Mahomes did lose last week. So let's see if he can win against Tom Brady this week, but let's hope Tom Brady can throw the damn ball because he's my fantasy football quarterback. Well, uh, he had no one to throw. He has first, second, and third uh, receivers were all out at the last game. So he was throwing to fourth, fifth, and sixth string. Which and were so, probably old tight ends and linemen. And oh, stuff. they were guys on the practice squad. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> so I think this week he gets two of them back. He gets Mike Evans and one other guy back. So at the very least, it'll be slightly improved. So then, it, then oh, we can it. hope. We yeah. can hope. We I don't even hope. like. Well, I like Brady now, but didn't like him on the Patriots. But I never pick him. Never. When I do, he does this to me. Yeah, that was pretty rough, man. That yeah, was really rough. jackass. All right, it'll be a great game. I look forward to that game. Yeah, I look forward to being hammered by noon. All right, ready for story three? Story, story three. Three. <laughs> I did it. Story three. <laughs> story three. Okay, go. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, I'm a man and I like farts, Chris, and I'm, uh, I'm not ashamed <laughs> to admit it. Well, okay. <laughs> I like farts and I cannot lie. Um, and Gosh. I'm not up on my, I'm not up on my fart history. Uh, I, I didn't pass my fart history class in college. I didn't and know they Lord had it. knows on my final, uh, fart science, I didn't study and <laughs> I failed, but listen, I still got my degree in weird body gases, but, you know, I passed with a C, um, so I, I didn't really, not proud of it. So, needless to say, it's understandable that I didn't know about the fatal exploding plant pants plague of 1930 New Zealand, because, of course, I didn't study it in my class. And so, here's a story. Basically, in the 1930s, what? New Zealand farmers kind of had, like, this unusual problem because their pants kept exploding or just bursting into flames. So think like spontaneous combustion. Is this the, was this the same? Does this coincide with the creation of beans? <laughs> yeah, like, like guys, I discovered a fart. That's um, what made that whole song. Beans, beans, the magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you catch on fire, but they changed it later on. <laughs> they had to change it for <laughs> rhyming reasons. Yeah, they did. Um, so I like how this article goes. It says, imagine the scene. You're a worker in the 1930s who has chosen to ride oh, out the depression <laughs> by heading to the middle of New Zealand out in the wilderness, where the biggest danger that you think you'll face is from sheep. You're working away when suddenly you smell something suspiciously like burnt butt hair. <laughs> what if it's this- a girl? Ah, wait. I she, think probably still, she probably still has butt hair. Nah, I'm saying there's still butt hair. If you're in New Zealand in the wilderness, you probably the 1930s. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of butt hair going on. Hair not, not too many Brazilian waxes. In <laughs> um, it no says, place to do that yeah, out there. <laughs> it says you look down and you find you're surprised that with no source of fire for miles around, your pants are alit with fire and even exploding as you try to get them off your body. And it said uh, reports came from farmers all across the country. So just imagine that you're riding your horse. 
And all of a sudden your pants are on fire. Now, maybe it's that you're a liar, liar. Oh God. That could, that could be, <laughs> maybe these people were just liar, liars, Chris. I'm not one to jump to conclusions. I'm a journalist and I wait for the facts to come in, but. What do you work for Fox? <laughs> <laughs> I damn don't work for CNN. They'd be like, this guy's pants lit on fire. It's global warming and it's Donald Trump's fault. News at 10. Um, so it says one farmer's pants set on fire as he rode his horse. Another was looking out on his uh, washing line where he's hanging his clothes, expecting to see his wet washing and found it was on fire. So <laughs> it, yes, it says a man's trousers have exploded. Uh, fortunately, the owner was not in them at the time. The newspaper said, which is a funny way of quoting that article. So um, it seems that there was like no safe leg or crotch or butt uh, safe in those times. Uh, so well, they asked the question, in this article, so why did the trousers turn on them and what could the farmers do to end the plague? Well, the short answer was that they had been done over by trying to rid themselves of, of something called ragwort, which by the way, could be the name of an alien or, ragwort, band. Yeah, or that, that's a great, like a uh, hardcore metal metal band. band. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the stage. Ragwort. <laughs> you know something like that um so ragwort was brought over from europe during the 1800s and it was spreading around the country like wildfire in the decades in the preceding 30s it was a weed and it caused all sorts of problems to livestock who ingested it damaging their liver and giving them diarrhea uh. and all kinds of stuff it says a solution to ragwort was sodium chlorate a chemical that while effective at removing ragwort came with some unfortunate side effects of the wait a minute my butt isn't usually this warm variety oh good that's the way they put it they see now that whoever wrote this is an asshole. i love it i know but i oh a burnt asshole um <laughs> it says sodium chloride is particularly explosive when mixed with other organic materials so for instance you know feces Ugh. so it says you know those farmers aren't the most um Shall I say washed? <laughs> they are the unwashed masses. So it says this can be a problem for the nether regions of the people uh, wearing it. If your clothes are made from an organic material such as wood or cotton and comes in touch with fecal matter at any point because it's dry and you have this stuff on you from the, the stuff they sprayed for the ragwort, it can explode when given too much heat or through friction such as uh, the friction of your legs walking together so so think of what has to happen you farting. have to have a you have to have a slightly little poopy in your pants which means you, you had a little bit of an explosive fart mixed with God, rubbing of the beginning. jeans or riding a horse or something that causes friction mixed with <gasps> the sodium chloride causes exploding pants that is very confusing yet hilarious all at the same time. Okay, I think so let's say you are riding a horse. I am. And your pants yes. literally just catch on fire. I would blame the horse. But like, what do you do? Like, what is <laughs> what your do reaction? Do? do you like- I'd fall off the horse? And, and start kicking those <laughs> and start kicking those pants off? And then I let's would, say you get the oh. pants off and you're like, whew, I survived that ordeal. Now you're just a guy who's wearing a horse with no pants. I was went through the wilderness on a horse with no pants. pants. There it is. Exactly. <laughs> but anyways, that's no, the that's, fart story. I swear I saw that on Mythbusters. That's, they think they did something similar to that, where it was like uh, they they was the chemicals. The thing is, is if it takes off so quickly like that, the rest of your clothes are probably have the shit on it too. So that's it's like, what I'm thinking too, right? Like, like yeah, exactly. I think it would be unless you got out of those pants really quickly. Your your shirt's gonna catch on fire. Your your hat. Your I mean, like every your socks. Like it just seems to me like. But then again, I don't have huge poo poo spray farts in my shirt. It usually is confined to my 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 pants. Well, they were wearing oh, they were wearing those uh, overalls. They had, like, ah, they call that those? could be they, it too. Yeah, overalls. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they were wearing. If they're wearing overalls. Like, guess what, buddy? Your pants are also your shirt. So and it's like a Dutch oven in there for those guys, man. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. So you have a game based on this, do you? I have a game. So it's three, two, one. Uh, three stories. Two idiots. We got that covered. All that's mm -hmm. left is the one, which is the one game. So. And, you know, being the fart historian that I am with my well, degree in fart science. Um, what is it called? It's 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 called, uh, the, the actual science is not called fart science. It's called. Um, 
Flatulence University is where I went. Flatulent, the fat, flatulinetics. Flatulinetics, nice. Flatulinetics, yeah, that's it. Okay, so let me get to my uh, fart game. So <laughs> I, I looked it up and I wanted to know um, the loudest fart in human history. So, like, Wait, that's a thing? Yes, it's not only of a thing. It is. It, it, there's, uh, as someone, you, I, you know, I've always been a little jealous of you having your own Guinness Book of World Records uh, attempt. Uh -huh. um, and I, I was won. Always, I won it. You did win. I mean, but let me ask you a question. Did someone break it? Of course they did. Okay. But... Well, then it's no longer a record. So now you and I are in the same position where neither of us have records. So but just... I, I broke it by myself. It took a group of like 15 to 20 people to break it. That is true. That's a good point. You're so, you... F you. Your wife always said you were the size of 15 people. Um, well, in anyways, my parents. so according to the Guinness Book of World Records, which, okay, I got a question on that in a moment. Let's put a pin in that for a second. Okay. The loudest fart ever recorded was a fart of 113 decibels by, I love this name, Herkimer Chort of Ripley, <laughs> New York. Okay. Herkimer so. Chort, which Chort is also uh, slang for farting in your, uh, having a popcorn fart in your pants. Uh, but, slang for a lot oh, of things. Oh, man, I chorted. <laughs> uh, but anyways, this happened on October 11th of 1972. So before hey, we what? get to this. What? Yeah, October 11th, 1972. <laughs> Guinness. So what I want to know is if you're working for Guinness and they're like, all right, Chris, we got a new story for you. We got another record that's going to be broken. Ooh, what is it? The man with the longest fingernails? No, no, we got that one. Ooh, world's tallest building. I hear they're building something in Dubai. That's no, we're not going to send you to Dubai to measure it. Damn it. Uh, Chris, remember, remember when you slept with my wife and uh, <laughs> I caught you? Oh yeah, man. I'm really sorry about that. Great. Well, I have your next assignment and it's measuring the loudest fart damn it you know like like who got sent to to record this first of all second of all well, well yeah in the setup how close was the microphone right like is there a standard is the microphone shoved right up into that anus or is that microphone eight feet away like i need to know this for when i try and break the record later also what was the prep that he did and how long did the people sitting there have to record until they got it right it like does he go like, guys 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 no, no 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 i got a better one in me just wait my if my name isn't herkimer or short uh, <laughs> i i promise you that no herkimer or short has ever farted less than 100 decibels anyways so the game is his fart was 113 decibels i'm going to name for you four loud things 113 decibels i'm gonna write that down 113 decibels I'm going to. Okay. <laughs> it just makes me laugh that a guy farted. Wait, hold on, hold on. Do you think he asked him to pull his finger first? <laughs> oh, clothed or not clothed? I mean, is this guy's anus just to get extra like vibrato volume? Did does he like bending over the microphone and going, guys? I'm really sorry I splattered on that one, but uh, trust me, this next uh, one's a dry fart. Anyways, okay. Before I continue, uh, uh, okay. And behind the blast shield. Hundred and thirteen decibels yeah, dbs okay i'm gonna name you four things okay okay three of the four are louder than the fart okay one of them is actually quieter than the fart and you're gonna try and pick you're gonna try and say what is what so here it is okay. 113 decibels is the fart herkim or short i want you to always remember that name i hope you, you die with that nerves. name on your lips uh, you're going to name your next child Herkimer or Chort. Anyways, how about a uh, industrial strength logging chainsaw? Oh, my God. Not just your chainsaw that you would use in your backyard. A logging chainsaw, a military jet at takeoff. I was hoping you'd put these in there, but now I'm kind of intimidated that the, there might the be more that are like New York this. City subway crossway. So, so that's where three subways cross at once. So yeah. you, the, the sound of three subways whooshing by. Okay. Okay. Or a volcano explosion. Are you serious? This is stupid. This isn't real. This is real. This isn't real. Okay. By the way, that guy had his own volcano explosion. Am I right? Well, he also... Um, Krakatoa! I hope that's what he said when he did it. No, Anyways. he said his name. Herkimer's Corp. Short. Uh, okay, so right. three of those things. So industrial sink chainsaw, military jet at takeoff, uh, New York City subway crossover where three subways cross, you know, whatever. Okay. Uh, or a volcano. Three of those are louder. Can I knock some of them off that I think are not? Well, no, no. Only that one are louder? Not, 
yes. But I will tell you that all of these are, uh, well, just keep, go ahead. Yes, 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 go ahead. I, want I would to say know. military jet is louder. Okay. I would say a volcano is louder. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm looking at the logging chainsaw in the subway crossway of three trains, and I'm having a little uh, problem. I've been to the New York subway. It is loud as hell when a train comes by. So I'm going to say the subway is also louder, but the logging chainsaw is 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 not louder. It's quieter. Oh, you were so, so close. Oh, you no. Right. Yeah. yeah, you were so you, you were so right. You're uh, so First of all, the volcano is louder. Uh, it's like 200 decibels. It's like insanely oh, yeah. loud. Um, the military jet at takeoff is 120, which, by the way, this fart is 113. That is really, really loud. Uh, 120. The chainsaw is louder, but also because it's also at 120. So one of those chainsaws has the same decibel as a military uh, jet at takeoff. The okay. subway, think of how loud that is. You know how loud yeah. that is. Oh, that yeah. Is, that is only 105, meaning this guy's fart was a 113 to that subway's 105. Okay. At so first, I thought to myself, I could beat this guy's fart. I got it in me. If I trained, ate a lot of like high fiber things and, and like really saved one up, I think there's a good chance I could beat him until I read these stats and I'm like, wait, that subway is only 105? They, I don't think I can out fart a subway, Chris. Uh, I don't think I can either without accidentally sharding my pants or sorry, shorting my pants. Um, <laughs> By the way, when is this guy going to get his biopic? Am I right? I was actually like, just going to look <laughs> online and find out exactly the, the day it happened. It's October 1972. Uh, October 11th of 1972. Hold on. October 11th, 1972 earthquake. <laughs> I can tell you where it happened. Uh, Niagara Falls, New York. <laughs> Oh my god, that's ridiculous! Oh, I just got yeah. light. I, like I said, when I when I was first reading the article, the world's last fart. I just I I thought I got it in me. I could do this, man. It's like I thought oh. I could be an Olympic athlete. But then you see how good these athletes really are. When he this guy Herkimer Chort is is the Babe Ruth of of his of farts. Um, he just started setting records that it's gonna take years to break. Have you looked up a picture of this guy yet? No, I have not. We should hold on. Let's do that real quick. Herkum. I don't know how to spell it. I have his name here. Hold on, I got it right here. So let me see here. Herkimer Chort. All right, I'm gonna cut and paste this mofo up in. There. Wait a second. Hold on. Here's a here's an article titled Herkimer Chort. That man was born to hold this record. Where is he? This can't be him. Uh, this this dude here. Short. How loud was your fart? Uh, I'm seeing old pictures. Of this one dude kind of leaning over the mustache looks like he could have been uh chp uh i'm gonna have to find a picture of him because i we need to make a statue for this guy he needs to have a statue somewhere he's, he's my new hero i know I will, that that's, that's the only one you've ever had wow <laughs> all right that is three two on the pod three stories two idiots one game and i lost boo <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, there's so many other fantastic podcasts on the This Is Funner platform, including Listen to This, uh, where a really handsome guy goes over music history with a theme that ties it all together. There's also one where like some guy and his wife who she's way, way, way better than him in almost every way. And they like talk about food and stuff, but listen to it for her, not him necessarily. Um, but, you know, those are two shows. It's called Converse Eat With Us. Yeah, my son's got a podcast, Aiden's Arcade Academy. Turn it on to your kids if they like video games. Getting into it right now, you'll enjoy the hell out of it. So this is funner.com and uh, hashtag this is funner or three, two, one, the pod. All right, Eddie everybody. Burp. Have yourself uh, a good week. Excuse me. Sorry. Nobody listens this long anyway. Bye. All right, guys. This is the outro. Thank you for listening to three, two, one, the pod. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. See you soon. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.